There are flies outside. I think that means it's a little bit warmer. I can see the sun. Hey guys, get off my truck. Packed up, ready to go. Saying bye to this little gorge valley place. Flew the drone up to that little rock out there. It's pretty cool. But last night, I had to back into this spot. So after checking out that spot right there which is not totally level i remember when i came in from the road there was this spot that looks like somebody had backed into before that was way flatter so backed in it was wasn't perfect but it definitely uh was more level than the other spot and i could tell that it was kind of leaning a little bit either to the front or to the side because when you drop the top and it rained last night and some this morning. When you drop the top, there is no water on the roof. You know, this being a flat roof camper, usually there would be some water that comes down if you're close to being perfectly level. So, but it was fine. Didn't feel like I was tilted at all when I'm sleeping. So that's all that matters. Definitely warmed up today. And sun came out, which I knew was going to happen. So today will be kind of a good day to go do some exploring. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I know you're probably tired of hearing that, but I usually figure something out. I think the immediate goal that I have is to go to Pemberton, which is only like five miles away. And from Pemberton, I could either go north. I don't think I'll stay in Pemberton. But I can definitely go, keep going north, and get up to uh, a couple other towns up there and then come down the east side of Garibaldi Provincial Park, which is kind of what some of these mountains are, a little bit south of here. And I'll come down like at the Hope, British Columbia area. The other alternative is to just drive back the way I came, which I'm about... By the time I get to Pemberton, it'll be about 100 miles north of Vancouver. So I'm not too far yet to go all the way around and down to Hope. I'm probably looking at like two to 300 miles. And from there, um, I'll be maybe like 100 miles west of Vancouver, straight west, near the U.S. border again. But I think what I'll do is... Uh, yeah, see how the day goes. And if I don't do that, if I don't do the loop, I can go back to Squamish. Through Whistler to Squamish. Actually, I'll be able to check out Whistler today without rain, so that would be cool. Walk around a little bit. Uh, but through Whistler, and then back to Squamish. And then either spend a night in Squamish, and then go someplace tomorrow. Or I can try to go to... Go back to Vancouver Island. Or maybe explore uh, the Sunshine Coast. 
which I heard a lot of cool things about. But first things first, get out of here. So I'm down to like 22 miles on the computer of the car. That's what the computer says anyways. What I've noticed over the past year of driving this truck is that it doesn't take into consideration the reserve tank that I have or the amount in the tank that's considered a reserve. It's a 35 gallon tank and all I've ever been able to get in when I go to the pump is 30 gallons. Maybe a hair more but never never gets to 31 gallons even when I'm like totally empty. And I've driven this thing until it says zero on the computer, zero miles to go, and only give me somewhere in like 30 gallon range. So my suspicion is that there is five more gallons of gas in there. So I'm not terribly concerned when the meter goes down to zero because I know there's, there's supposed to be more gas. Now, that's just based on the specs of this vehicle. I've never tested it, and I guess the only way to find out is to test that. And Marlene has never wanted me to test it while she's here. And I guess in a way, since she's gone down in LA with the kids, I technically could, I technically could test it. Just let it run until it dries. And, you know, it's a gas engine, so it's not as critical. It's not as bad as, uh, as it is for for a gas engine as compared to a diesel engine. Am I actually gonna do it? I don't know. This is the town of Pemberton. Actually, the town, downtown's over there. I'm just parked here next to the visitor center. and get a coffee from this tiny house looking coffee shop. Hello, good morning. Good, uh, can I get an Americano? Um, let's do the large. Did you guys have this custom built for the business? That's really cool. How long have you guys uh, been doing this? It took over a year ago. Really? Took over a year to build it? Did you do it yourself? My husband did Oh, no way. Wow, that's awesome. We bought just a flat trailer. Right, right. It's like a tiny house. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. We had our friends building beside us. That was tiny house. Oh, so some they built one like it, but they use it to, yeah. to live or travel or they or do they in there, yeah. they live in there? Cool. Yeah, it's on the railroad. Yeah. Right. Did yeah. you did you think it was gonna take that long? No. <laughs> no, no. We were thinking so short, like three months or something. Three right. Well, just because, I mean, why, why do you think it took so long? Because oh, yeah, Everything's so small. Right. And then this one is commercial, so we have to... That's the for you. Oh, I see. So, your friends who, who live in it didn't have to go through that, or did they? No, no. Okay, no. it's because it's commercial. Yeah, this is commercial. Ah, I see. Cool. Thank you. They built this themselves. Took them a year to do it. They had to get a lot of certification done because it was going to be used as a commercial business. Really cool. Okay, the town's not real big, but there's this place called The Pony that's supposed to have a really good burger. And I'm a burger fan. I was reading some reviews on Google Maps. And here's one that says, five stars. We happened to stop here while looking for a place for lunch on a road trip and had the best burger I've ever had in my life. It was a super ultimate burger. Whoa. I'm a big fat bozo and I've eaten literally a ton of burgers. So saying this is the best burger I've had probably means that it's the very best out of the probable 500,000 dead cows and bun combinations. Which when you think about it, what are you guys' names? Uh, Jordan. Nice to meet you, Jordan, Dan, you. and you. 
Yeah, nice. nice to meet you guys. Yeah, we just so crazy up. that we just like ran into you and you saw me. You recognized me from my GoPro video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was helpful, man. I was I was searching. I'm looking to get a new one and uh, yeah. tons of questions. Right, like it's hard to it's hard to tell if it's the right one or not. But um, yeah, you know, and I have a couple videos on drones too. I don't know if you watch those. Yeah, I've seen them. I've seen you saw them. those. Yeah, yeah. A couple of them really blew up, and you know, it, it was really just because like. I've owned a bunch of drones, yeah. and I've built a couple of those, like, you know, racing quads. Okay. So I kind of know about what it takes to get one to fly. Yeah, man. Cool. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, I'll, I'll check so out. So cool I ran into you. Yeah, man. Nice, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet nice you. Enjoy Pemberton, buddy. All right, thanks. How cool was that? Running into somebody here in Pemberton to watch my videos. That's the first time that's ever happened to me as it relates to YouTube, because I've more or less just recently gotten into putting up a lot of YouTube videos. We run into people who read our blog, we run into people who follow us on Instagram and Facebook and even Twitter, but to run into somebody who watches my YouTube videos, that's really funny. That's really cool. Because I think what YouTube does is it makes people feel closer to you because there's a lot of me just like talking to the camera like this. But anyways, nice meeting you, Jordan. Here is the pony. Let's check out the best burger in the world, according to that other dude. That thing right there. Maple glazed pork belly foie gras cheddar. Holy crap, that thing looks crazy. I don't know if I can handle that. A little bit against foie gras and what they treat the geese. I don't know. Maybe just go simple. Get a gourmet burger. And look at this burger. It looks awesome. That is the gourmet burger, I think. I'm gonna do this. Well, all that talk about testing how much spare or reserve fuel I have in the tank went out the door when I realized that in Pemberton, the fuel is 10 cents per liter cheaper. I mean, I could drag it out and have to get gas probably somewhere else closer to Vancouver, but I just paid a dollar 13 I think per liter which is yeah which is probably 10% cheaper than what I would have paid down in Vancouver so yeah I'm definitely not I'm definitely not going to uh, chance it here when I can just fill up in Pemberton and I'm actually gonna I think I'm gonna head back south from here I think at least that's where I'm going right now. But Pemberton was a cool town. It was little, it's in the middle of the mountains. Great food. Man, the burger at the Pony was awesome. I didn't get the pork belly foie gras burger. I mean, that thing looks crazy rich. I don't think I could have handled it. And also, foie gras, yeah, I'm not, I'm not big on the way it's produced and I'm sure it's delicious but just a regular gourmet burger was awesome it was 15 bucks tax and tip came out to about 18 bucks which the burger place I ate at down in North Vancouver that cost me that was like a fast food type place and the burgers were not good 
and that was $14. I did get a drink, and here I didn't get a drink, I just got water, but this is much better money spent on a burger. I've decided to drive down the Squamish, leaving Whistler. I pulled into Whistler, and it was pretty crowded. The weather's nice, it's the weekend, so I'm guessing a lot of people are just up visiting from Vancouver and other areas, thereabouts. So, for me, I just felt like, man, why walk around this town? It was a beautiful town when I was there yesterday, mostly in the rain, but at the end of the day, it's still just a resort town. So, unless I have a lot of time to kind of stay there and, you know, get to really know the place, stopping by for an hour or two on the weekend is just not, not an ideal way to explore, I think. So, and I feel pretty good about the two places that I went to these last couple days. You know, Whistler for a bit and Pemberton today for a bit. And also got to Boondock at a couple of spots off of uh, Forest Roads in British Columbia. So, it is Saturday, which means a week from today, I cross back into the U.S. And I start making my way south. And obviously, this coming up week, starting Monday, I have a full week of work. So, I got to be kind of park somewhere or at least somewhat static to be able to get work done well here's Porto Cove looks like the weekend and the nice weather brought everybody out campground is full it wasn't full last week is it really full so the plan to go to Porto Cove Provincial Park is a bust place is totally full and I went to check out the bathroom and see how the showers are. Not the best showers. And I let the water run for a bit. Never really got hot. So would not really be a great place to stay anyways. The view is beautiful. And today's a nice day for it. But this coming week, it's going to be rain again pretty much all week. Hopefully not like constantly nonstop. If it was like last week, it would be okay because there were some like sort of breaks in the day we can go out and walk around so I would just hate to be stranded somewhere with things to do and then not be able to do it because of the rain and then not have the benefit of having hookups to run the heater and having a washer dryer to be able to do laundry just because when it's so wet like this there's a lot of condensation. I'm constantly like wiping the condensation off. And then I get a lot of wet towels that I like to run it through the through the dryer real quick. And it was nice to be able to do that. So I'm gonna go back to North Vancouver right now. Probably get a bite to eat somewhere. And then decide if I'm gonna go back to Capilano RV Park for the week or not. So I'll get a weekly rate if I spend seven nights there. And today being Saturday, and then I leave the following Saturday, I could just be hanging out there all week and just deal with the rain while I'm there. And it's nice and comfortable. They have a lounge and hot tub indoors and showers and all that good stuff. Walking distance to shopping and food. So I flew the drone at Porto Cove too. Here's a little clip of the video from my drone flight at Porto Cove. I flew just for a minute and I put it into sport mode to kind of go up and down the highway a little bit to see the cars drive by. And then it got like this funky thing that happened where for a second I thought the drone was gonna crash. And the video's right here. It's just like the camera got turned sideways and maybe the drone got tilted too. Maybe, you know, maybe it's a gust of wind that happened. I don't know, I haven't looked at the footage yet. I just remember what it looked like just now when I was flying it from my phone. So I thought for a second it was going in the water, but it recovered. And after it recovered, I put it back into regular mode and flew fine, I flew it all the way back, landed. It didn't look like anything was broken. So yeah, that was a close one nearly escaped a catastrophic loss of my drone, my Phantom 4. So, 
I'm going to take this footage and examine it pretty closely tonight to see exactly, we'll see if I can figure out exactly what happened. I don't know. I don't know. Now I'm a little timid to fly this thing, but it's probably for the best anyways because it's been raining a lot. And I've been flying in a lot of high moisture areas and even every now and then there'll be some sprinkling on the drone. So it's probably not great. And also I just updated the firmware last night, which may have something to do with it. So let's hope, let's hope uh, everything gets ironed out and nothing bad happens.